Well, we're here at the C3 conference where we have a lot of first in man reports, but I'm going to talk about something different, something I would call the most in man kind of reports, where we're moving away from doing single center trials like we used to do back in the 90s to multi center trials to mega trials to now what I'm calling giga trials, trials that will enroll, say, 180,000 patients uh, to test a hypothesis. Uh, in the old days, uh, we powered the trial to test one central hypothesis. We we're often lucky if we had enough events to test that question. But when you enroll 180,000 patients, you are definitively going to test the question and probably going to test some of the secondary questions as well. So a whole different meaning to statistical significance. In fact, we may achieve statistical significance, but some people may say, well, is it clinically significant? So there is a risk that we'll find some things that are statistical, but maybe not that clinically relevant. These big trials will change the dynamics of how we enroll patients. Right now, a doctor, a nurse approaches the patient. There's a lot of bricks and mortar to get the job done. It's done in a hospital. Moving forward, what we're doing in a big trial I'm leading, the Heartline trial, is people will enroll on an app. So we're going straight to the patient. There won't be any hospital. There won't be any nurse. There won't be a doctor. The consent process is done centrally through a central IRB. So the ethics are there. There is oversight, but it's done centrally. Secondly, you won't have people coming back to those bricks and mortar for follow-up for the trial. Now, they can see their doctor, obviously, but for purposes of the trial, we'll know whether they were dead or alive or whether they had a heart attack or whether they had a stroke based upon the insurance databases, the claims database. This will cut out a lot of costs because we won't have independent committees deciding if the patient had a heart attack or not. You won't have to gather up all that information. Uh, this will give us much more sensitivity in detecting events, but maybe not uh, as much specificity. Uh, so there's a trade-off uh, there, of course. But when you put all that together, you see that you're really cutting out a lot of the expense. You're cutting out a lot of the bricks and mortar. You're cutting out 40% of the expense of trials, which is monitoring to make sure the data was entered correctly into the case report form, the person doing the reporting is no longer the nurse or the doctor. Uh, these are patients who are now reporting about how they feel, what some of the economic drivers are of the care. So these are PROs, patient reported outcomes. So it's a brave new world. Uh, you know, we're gonna be able to do these big trials at a fraction of the cost of what it used to uh, cost us to get a trial done, we can no longer afford to expend a billion dollars uh, to test one question. We've got to be able to do it much more uh, inexpensively. What we're studying is atrial fibrillation, and uh, it'll have people randomize the Apple Watch or no Apple Watch. We'll see if the Apple Watch does detect atrial fibrillation more often in people over the age of 65. And if initiation of therapy, uh, anticoagulant therapy, if it improves outcomes, some of those harder outcomes that we talked about. So stay tuned, it's an exciting world, and I think we're gonna change the way trials are done with this new GigaTrial approach.